Hello everybody, my name is Bloody Elevator. The torture drone event is currently taking place and we'll be fighting another boss for our boss rush series. This first minute of this video will be summarizing the grinding that had to be done to get the glyphs necessary for crafting the fiend ID card for accessing the torture drone boss fight. Thankfully, at the time, there was a tier 3 fiend arena that was available to be used for farming heat, crowns, and glyphs. So here we are, with our collected glyphs, ready to craft the Fiend ID badge, so we can fight the Tornado now. Insert the ID card here, and let's get going. So the armor and weapon loadout will be a bit mixed today, because I had to solo the Tornado a few times to see what loadout worked best for me. The first few attempts will be shortened, but the last attempt will not be. If I'm correct, the armor loadout is essentially the same for each run. We're running with a Chaos Cowl and Chaos Cloak. And for the first few upcoming runs, we have a Grey Owlite Shield. And our weapon loadout for this one is a Combustor with a Blitz Needle. I was just curious how well we would perform with our Firestorm Citadel equipment. Yeah, that was my first attempt. I got shocked and boxed into a corner. I somehow forgot that I could have Shadow Cloaked and gotten myself out of there. So instead I just hit them with my sword a few times before dying again. We do end up winning, but it took a few sparks to get through this boss fight. I did face the Tortodron before. But that was a few years ago, and I completely forgot how to fight this thing. The second attempt went somewhat better, at least I didn't get boxed in this time. But in the end, it pretty much ended the same way. Again, had to use a few sparks, but we do win at the end. The only problem with this was that it took 10,000 crowns to craft the ID badge. So after each attempt, a farming session at the Firestorm Citadel was necessary in order to replenish our crowns. As you don't really earn that much crowns, or heat, in the Torto Jones boss fight. The third attempt, I thought I'd try to see if the Combustor's charge attack would help me here at all. And that answers that. It didn't really help me here. We do make it out in the end at least. This fourth attempt was me testing out if the Polaris that we made in the previous episode would have been of any use to us here. And it kind of does as it does push the fiend away from us, and sometimes does shock the Torto drones. Thank you. 
And we get sniped by a Griever. So this is my fifth and last attempt at the Toto Jones. Also because this was the attempt where I had the least amount of deaths. I mean, we will be dying a few times, but it's uh, significantly better than my first attempt. So my idea for fighting these Toto Jones was to kite them with the Polaris while pushing away fiends, and occasionally shocking the Toto Jones. It kind of works until we get hit by a barrage of attacks and get shocked. So according to the Spiral Knights wiki, it takes about 30 ancient shells in order to make everything up to the 5 star Torta Drone equipment, as you can only get about 3 ancient shells per fight. So grinding for Torta Drone equipment can be tedious, but kind of rewarding because people do seem to like the design of the Tortajone equipment. I'm thinking about making at least one piece of the 5 star Tortajone equipment. Maybe the shield, because they do look nice. Or maybe the weapon, because they do have a unique kind of attack. I say only one, because the farming these glyphs took quite a while. And if we do make a 5 star Trotojun equipment, then maybe I'll make one or two more the next time the event comes around. I'll definitely want to rematch these Toto Jones later, because I want to be able to defeat the Toto Jones completely without dying. But currently, I'm unable to do that, as I need a way to deal with the shocking issue, and need to upgrade our equipment so we can take a few more hits. So once the Toto Jones event is over, I'm thinking about working towards making a Snarbolax armor set, as I really like the design of it. Unfortunately, it will require a Shadow Key, as some materials to craft the Snarbolax armor is only available in the Shadow levels. Before we do that, maybe we can work towards getting a Snarbolax weapon set. It'll probably be easier to do that until we get our hands on a Shadow Key. We just need to defeat the Snarbolax a few times and hunt down the recipes for the 5 star Snarbolax weapon set. Those were some things that I was thinking about working towards in this series.
Well, it only took a few sparks and a few tries, but we did it. So let's collect our things and head for the exit. If you enjoyed this series, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And that's all I have to share with you for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching.